Welcome to episode one of designing a CNC epoxy granite mill. My goal with this machine is for it to be a desktop machine. Keep the weight under 150 pounds so I can move it around relatively easily. I spent the day working on this and here's how far I came. Right now it's just roughed in to make sure the travels are right and the working envelope is pretty good and everything fits together. As we go further along I'm going to add a lot more details such as limit switches, bellows, of course the head's missing and the spindle's missing, feet, it'll have leveling features between the column and the base, a lot more features. This was just one day's of work. My mill right now is this TAG CNC. I also drew this CAD. And this machine works pretty well. My goal with this machine here, the epoxy granite, is to have a better surface finish than the TAG, to be stiffer, and to have a little bit of a larger working envelope. And the TAG's working envelope is 12 inches on the X, 6 inches on the Y, and uh, 6 inches on the Z. What I'd like to do for the granite epoxy version is to keep the X 12 inches, make the Y either 8 or 10 inches, and make the Z 10 inches. That will be plenty of room for the small parts that I'll probably be making on it. Here's my take right now. This is actually my video on YouTube. So it takes a nice cut and I'll probably use that machine to help build this machine. The linear ways, uh, these are 15 millimeter and they're just drawn as blocks. I do have the actual CAD for them and downloaded but I'm keeping this simple right now because I'm not sure what it's going to look like so I don't want to waste time putting all those detailed features in. The ball screw, I did put that in uh, to make sure I have enough clearance between the nut and the bottom of the saddle. The basic design I chose for this machine is how the vertical machining centers are. So it has the base and the saddle and the saddle is larger than the table and the table goes to the end of the saddle uh, as opposed to the design the TAG and some other mills use where the, the saddle is narrow and the bed or the table overhangs the saddle. They both have pros and cons. I want to do it this way for a do-it-yourself machine is once the spindle is installed I'll be able to machine the entire top surface of the table under the spindle power to make sure it's all flat. The software I'm using for this is uh, Onshape. I use that for my day job professionally. And they also have a free hobby version. I'm not affiliated with them at all but I really like the software. I've been using Pro E slash Creo for 20 years. Wow, I like this a lot better. <laughs> I've never designed or built a CNC before, so this will be a new experience for me. I am a mechanical engineer in my day job, so I've designed a lot of consumer products and some, now some industrial products, but this is definitely new territory. I'm not claiming to be an expert by any means. I just love machines and I spent the last few months, the last year, just watching tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos of other do-it-yourselfers making their own machines. I'm kind of doing this for fun right now. Even if I never build one, I, I'd like to design one just in my spare time. It's just, it's a hobby to me. It's fun to me. I don't know if I'll ever actually build this. It's going to be a lot of work, but right now I just want to keep it in CAD, keep it in the computer and see how far I can take it and see if, uh, see if I'll actually build it one day. Thanks for joining me and I'll update periodically as I add more features and refine the design. Thanks for watching.